morning. Happy Saturday. Okay, September 18th. Rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Nehemiah 3, 1 through 32, 445 BC. Then Eliashib, the high priest, and the other priests started to rebuild at the Sheep Gate. They dedicated it and set up its doors, buildings, building the walls as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicated in the Tower of Hananel. People from the town of Jericho worked next to them, and beyond them was Zachar, son of Imri. The fish gate was built by... I feel I have lipstick on my teeth. The fish gate was built by the sons of Hassana. They laid the beams, set up its doors, installed its bolts and bars. Merimoth, son of Uriah, and grandson, Hakaz, repaired, repaired the next section of the wall. Beside him were Meshalem, son of Berechiah, and grandson, Meshezebel, and then Zadok, son of Banna. Next were the people from Tekoa, though their leaders refused to work with the construction supervisors. The old city gate was repaired by Joida, son of Pesea, and Meshalem, son of... Besedea. They laid the beams, set up its doors, and installed its bolts and bars. Next to them were Melatiah from Gibeon, Jadon from Maranoth, people from Gibeon, and people from Mizpah, the headquarters of the governor of the province of west of Euphrates River. Next was Uziel, son of Herahea, a goldsmith by trade, who also worked on the wall. Behind him was Hananiah, the manufacturer of perfumes. They laid out a section of Jerusalem as they built the broad wall. Raphaia, son of Hur, the leader of the half-district of Jerusalem, was next to them on the wall. Next, Judea, son of Her Haramath, repaired the wall across from his own house. And next to him was Hattush, son of Hashabaneah. Then came Machajaya, son of Haram, and Hasab, son of pa Pahoth Moab, who repaired another section of the wall and the tower of the ovens. Shalom, son of Halahash, Hal and his daughters repaired the next section. He was the leader of the other half of the district of Jerusalem. The valley gate was repaired by the people from Zenoa, led by Hanan. They set up its doors and installed its bolts and bars. They also repaired 1,500 feet of wall to the dung gate. The dung gate was repaired by Machajiah, son of Rechab, the leader of Beth Hakaram district. He rebuilt it, set up its doors, and installed its bolts and bars. The fountain gate was repaired by Shalom, son of Kol Hohaz, the leader of the Mizpah district. He rebuilt it, roofed it, and set up its doors, and installed its bolts and bars. Then he repaired the wall to the pool of Siloam. Near the, near the king's garden, and he rebuilt the wall as far as the stairs that descended from the city of David. Next to him was Nehemiah, son of Azbuk, the leader of the half-district of Beth Zur. He rebuilt... My eyes are dry this morning. He rebuilt the wall from the place across from the tombs of David's family, as far as the water reservoir of the House of Warriors. Next to him, repairs were made by a group of Levites working under the supervision of Rehum, son of Benai. Then came Hashabiah, the leader of the district of Keilah, who supervised the building of the wall on behalf of his own district. Next down the line were his countrymen, led by Benui, son of Henadad, the leader of the other half of the district of Kilea. Next to them, Ezer, son of Joshua, the leader of Mizpah, repaired another section of wall across from the ascent to the armory near the angle in the wall. Next to him was Baruch, son of Zabai, who jealously, zealously repaired an additional section from the angle to the door of the house of Eliasha, the high priest. Merimoth, son of Uriah, and grandson of Hakaz, rebuilt another section of the wall, extending from the door of Eliashib's house to the end of the house. The next repairs were made by the priests from the surrounding region. After them, Benjamin and Heshub repaired the section across from their house, and Azariah, son of Messiah, and grandson of and grandson of Ananiah, who rebuilt another section of the wall from Azariah's house to the angle and to the corner. Palael, son of Uzay, man, this is hard to keep track of. Palael, son of Uzay, carried on his work from 
a point opposite the angle, and the tower that projects from the king's upper house beside the court guard. Next to him were Padiah, son of Parash, with the temple servants living on the hill of Ophel, who repaired the walls as far as a point across from the water gate to the east and projecting tower. Then came the people of Tekoa, who repaired another section from across the great projecting tower and over to the wall of Ophel. Above the horse gate, the priests repaired the wall. Each one repaired the section immediately across from his own house. Next, Zadok, son of Immer, also rebuilt the wall across from his own house, and beyond him was Shemaiah, son of Shechaniah, the gatekeeper of the east gate. Next, Hananiah, son of Shelemiah, and Hanan, the sixth son of Zalath, repaired another section, while Meshalam, son of Berechiah, repaired the wall as far as the housing for the temple servants and merchants across from the inspection gate. Then he continued as far as the upper room at the corner. The other goldsmiths and merchants repaired the wall from that corner to the sheep gate. I hope you've kept track of all of this. <laughs> Enemies opposing the rebuilding. Nehemiah 4, 1 through 23, 445 BC. Sanballat was very angry when he learned that we were rebuilding the wall. He flew into a rage and mocked the Jews, saying in front of his friends and the Sumerian army officers, What does this bunch of poor, feeble Jews think they're doing? Do they think they can rebuild the wall in a single day just by offering a few sacrifices? Do they actually think they can make something of stones from rubbish from a rubbish heap and charred ones at that? Tobiah, the Ammonite, who was standing beside him, remarked, That stone wall would collapse if even a fox walked along the top of it. Then I prayed, Hear us, O God, for we are being mocked. May their scoffing fall back on their own heads, and may them, they themselves become captives in a foreign land. Do not ignore their guilt. Do not blot out their sin, for they have provoked you to anger here in front of the builders. At, the, at last the wall was complete to half its height around the entire city, for the people had worked with enthusiasm. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the other Arabs, Ammonites and Ash, Ashdodites, heard that the work was going on ahead and that the gaps in the wall of Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. Then the people of Judah began to complain. The workers are getting tired, and there is so much rubble to be removed. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. The Jews who lived near the enemy came to us and told us again, they will come from all directions and attack us. So I placed armed guards behind the lowest parts of the wall in the exposed areas. I stationed the people to stand guard by families, armed with swords, spears, and bows. Then, as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. When our enemies heard that we knew of their plans and that God had frustrated them, we all turned, we all returned to our work on the wall. But from then on, only half my men worked while the other half stood guard with spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. The leaders stationed themselves behind the people of Judah who were rebuilding the wall. The laborers carried on their work with one hand supporting their load and the other hand holding a weapon. All the builders had a sword belted to their side. The trumpeter stayed with me to sound the alarm. Then I explained to the nobles and officials and all the people, the work is very spread out and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. When you hear the blast of the trumpet, rush to wherever it is sounding, then our God will fight for us. We worked early and late from sunrise to sunset, and half the men were always on guard. I also told everyone living outside the walls to stay in Jerusalem. That way, they and their servants could come and help with guard duty at night and work during the day. During this time, none of us, not I, nor my relatives, nor my servants, nor the guards who were with me, ever took off our clothes. We carried our weapons with us at all times, even when we went for water. Nehemiah defends the oppressed. Nehemiah 5, 1 through 13, 445 BC. About this time, some of the men and their wives raised a cry of protest against their fellow Jews. They were saying, 
We have such large families. We need more food to survive. Others said, we have mortgaged our fields, vineyards, and homes to get food during the famine. And others said, we've had to borrow money on our fields and vineyards to pay our taxes. We belong to the same family as those who are wealthy, and our children are just like theirs. Yet we must sell ourselves, our children, into slavery just to get enough money to live. We have already sold some of our daughters, and we are helpless to do anything about it, for our fields and vineyards are already mortgaged to others. When I heard their complaints, I was very angry. After thinking it over, I spoke out against these nobles and officials, and I told them, you are hurting your own relatives by charging interest when they borrow money. Then I called a public meeting to deal with the problem. At the meeting, I said to them, we are doing all we can to redeem our Jewish relatives who have had to sell themselves to pagan foreigners, but you are selling them back into slavery again. How often must we redeem them? And they had nothing to say in their defense. Then I pressed further. What you are doing is not right. Should you not walk in the fear of our God in order to avoid being mocked by enemy nations? I myself, as well as my brothers and my workers, have been leading, have been lending the people money and grain. But now I now let us stop this business of charging interest. You must restore their fields, vineyards, olive groves, and homes to them this very day, and repay the interest you charged when you lent them money, grain, and new wine, and olive oil. They replied, we will give back everything demanded and nothing more from the people, and demand nothing more from the people. We will do as you say. Then I called the priests and made the nobles and officials swear to do what they had promised. I shook out the folds of my robe and said, if you fail to keep your promise, may God shake you like this from your homes and from your property. The whole assembly responded, Amen, and they praised the Lord. And they did this, and they did as they had promised. Continued opposition to rebuilding. Nehemiah 6, 1-14, 445 B.C. Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of the enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall and had no gaps remained, though we had not yet set up the doors and the gates. So Sanballat and Geshem sent a message to me asking to meet them at once, asking them, asking me to meet them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But I realized they were plotting to harm me, so I replied by sending this message to them. I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? Four times they sent the same message, and each time I gave them the same reply. The fifth time, Sanballat's servant came with an open letter in his hand, and this is what it said. There is a rumor among the surrounding nations, and Gershom tells me, it is true, that you and the Jews are planning to rebel, and that is why you are rebuilding the wall. According to his reports, you plan to be their king. He also reports that you have appointed prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim about you, look, there is a king in Judah. You can be very sure that this report will get back to the king, so I suggest that you come and talk it over with me. I replied, there is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. They were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued to work with even greater determination. Later, I went to visit Shemaiah, son of Deleah and grandson of Mehetabel, Mehetabel, who was confined to his home. He said, let us meet together inside the temple of God and bolt the doors shut. Your enemies are coming to kill you tonight. But I replied, should someone in my position run from danger? Should someone in my position enter the temple to save his life? No, I won't do it. I realized that God had not spoken to him, but that he had uttered his, this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. They were hoping to intimidate me and make me sin. Then they would be able to accuse and discredit me. Remember, oh my God, all the evil things that Tobiah and Sanballat have done. And remember Noadiah the prophet and all the prophets like her who have tried to intimidate me. The builders complete the wall. Nehemiah 6, 15 through 7, 3, 445 BC. So on October 2nd, the wall was finished, just 52 days after we had begun, when our enemies in the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized this work had been done with the help of our God. During those 52 days, many letters went back and forth between Tobiah and the nobles of Judah, for many in Judah had sworn allegiance to him, because his father-in-law was Shechaniah, son of Era, and his son Jehohanan was married to the daughter of Meshullam, son of Berechiah. They kept telling me about Tobiah's good deeds, and they told him everything I said, and Tobiah kept sending threatening letters to intimidate me. After the wall was finished, I had set up doors and the gates. 
the gatekeepers, singers, and Levites were appointed. I gave responsibility of governing Jerusalem to my brother Hananiah, along with Hananiah, the commander of the fortress, for he was a faithful man who feared God more than most. I said to them, do not leave the gates open during the hottest part of the day. And even while the gatekeepers are on duty, have them shut the bar, shut and bar the doors. Appoint the residents in Jerusalem to act as guards, everyone on a regular watch. Some will serve at sentry posts and some in front of their own homes. All right. That's it. Whew. I'm all toasty this morning. It's a little warm down here. All right. I am going upstairs and making donuts. Time to make the donuts. That was cheesy. I'm going to make pumpkin donuts. At some point, I'll make apple cider donuts, but today I have pumpkin that I have to use, so I'm going to make some pumpkin donuts. And I'm going to try to coat them some in chocolate and some in white chocolate is my plan. So I hope to see you there. Won't, hopefully it won't take me long to get my stuff together and get moving up there. I have everything pretty much ready. So I hope you all have a blessed day. I hope to see you while I cook. And if not, I'll see you tomorrow for more treadmill devotions. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.